Good morning and always good morning. In this video, we are talking about the self-management, cause you can learn the management and the best time when we call said that, which one is the first important or what kind of important to do. Why is self-management important? The second of the three primary domains of personal skills that comprise an individual's emotional intelligence is self-regulation, often known as self-management. The ability to govern and manage oneself, including one's feelings, one's inner resources, and one's abilities, is referred to as self-regulation. In addition to that, it includes your capacity to control your impulses. Self-management entails, among other things, acknowledging and accepting responsibility for one's behaviors and making sure those activities are congruent with one's own core beliefs and principles. 1. Consciousness Important to have self does not mean covering up or suppressing your feelings, rather, it means being aware of them and exercising appropriate control over them. This entails keeping one's cool not acting irresponsibly in response to any situation, as opposed to acting hastily or overreacting. It leads to a situation in which we can make balanced choices based on what is important, as opposed to only basing our choices on how we are feeling at the moment. People who have high self-control are often able to keep their cool even when they are under a lot of stress. They can maintain clear thinking despite external pressures and continue to make sound choices. The absence of overt expressions of emotion is frequently a clear indication of one's level of self-control. In the past, each one of us has reacted poorly or improperly to certain occurrences or circumstances, and in the future, we will each do the same thing. Reflective practice, also known as thinking back on previous events, enables us to analyze and comprehend why we behaved in a certain way, which, in turn, might help us behave more wisely in the future. It is helpful to think about yourself in a good light when reflecting, so keep that in mind. Think of something more upbeat, such as, I can use those experiences to learn and become a better person. Instead of saying to yourself, I have utterly messed things up, I'm a failure, try saying something like, I can use those experiences to grow and become a better person. 2. Integrity Characterized by a high level of integrity and conscientiousness. Because both involve behaving, good, by your values and code of ethics, trustworthiness and conscientiousness can be thought of as two sides of the same coin. Trustworthiness and conscientiousness are two sides of the same coin. Your ability to uphold your integrity, which may be defined as making sure that what you do is in line with the principles and ideals that guide your life, is the foundation of your trustworthiness. For additional information regarding this topic, you might find it useful to browse through our pages titled, Learning to Use Your Moral Compass. People who can be relied on conduct themselves in an ethical manner. They earn trust through the personal activities they take, and through how those actions are congruent with the principles they profess to uphold. They are also ready to confront unethical behavior and take a stand when it is important to do so, even if doing so may cause them to lose the favor of others. Being responsible is accepting responsibility for one's performance and ensuring that it is in line with both one's abilities and their own beliefs and principles. According to Daniel Goleman, who has written multiple books on the subject of emotional intelligence, conscientious people meet their obligations and honor their commitments to others, accept responsibility for establishing and then accomplishing reasonable goals in their personal and professional lives, take care in their work and arrange themselves in such a way as to ensure that they will be able to fulfill their responsibilities. 3. Flexibility Daniel Goleman defined flexibility as being flexible in one's approach to responding to change. Change is something that many of us struggle to adapt to. Change may be upsetting and stressful for young children, and the capacity to deal with these feelings is mostly a taught skill. This is something that will be obvious to anyone who has had any kind of prolonged or consistent interaction with children. Even when we are adults, the effects of personal change can continue to be quite stressful if we do not exercise careful control and work to improve our adaptability and resilience. It is possible, however, to view change not as a challenge but rather as an opportunity for adventure if we build our ability to adapt to changing circumstances and gain an awareness of what is taking place. People who can adapt, namely those who have invested time in building their abilities. 
people who are flexible, or those who have spent time cultivating their capacity to handle and respond to change, typically have the following tendencies. Be able to effectively prioritize their tasks and deal with various competing demands on their time and energy while remaining flexible and adaptable when necessary. Reorient both their responses and how they carry out their activities to most effectively adapt to new circumstances, be adaptable in their interpretation of events and possess the ability to take into account a variety of points of view. 4. Creativity. Being open to new ideas and methods is an essential component of development. Creativity people, according to Daniel Goleman, do the following, look for new ideas from a wide variety of sources, are prepared to consider new ways of solving problems, even if that's not the way that we've always done it round here. Generate their original thoughts, and are open to considering issues from a variety of viewpoints and accepting challenges to their established ways of thinking. Thank you very much. And see you to the next video.